All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, coming from you here in Annapolis. And uh, we have plenty of uh, J70 guests here with us, including the North Sales team, who's also uh, viewing to watch the live debut of some of our new sale designs. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Alan Terhune. I'm here in the Annapolis office and I'll help get this discussion going. I'm here with a good portion of our J70 team to talk about our new sales. So uh, let's make sure they're all online with us. Uh, Eric Doyle, are you out there? Hey, Alan. Yep. Hear you loud and clear. You got me? I do. Got you. Got a good picture of your star boat there in the background. We're ready to go. Nice. Um, over in England, I think uh, Rory Scott's with us. Evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you are, I think. And for those of you who don't know Rory, he's the current world champion, and I think one of them in his background there. Um, Julio, calling from Italy, are you with us? Yes. Ciao, Alan. And good That's evening funny. from Italy. Good to see you. It's only been a few weeks since I saw you in Miami, but it's good to see you uh, back on here. And last, yeah, certainly not least, our Los Angeles area expert, Alex Curtis. Are you with us, Alex? Hey, Alan. How's it going, man? Good. Hope everybody's doing well, and we're excited to get here. So uh, for all you guys who are out there, we're, we're really excited to talk about two new sales that we're going to debut here on this talk and some new tuning updates. So let's uh, dive right into it. We'll get, get going here on our new sale that we have, the J2 Plus Jib. And Eric, if you could chime in here, talk us through a little bit about what's going on. Yeah, um, it's, well, maybe we'll start uh, a little bit, a little bit of history and kind of what North Sales offers right now and has for the past few years. We, we've had two jibs, uh, the J2 and the J6. Uh, the J2 was our initial sale that uh, really has been unchanged since the inception of the class, other than uh, shortening the leech to allow for in-hauling. And uh, as we went down that in-hauling road, uh, we, we changed the jibs, the design a little bit, a little straighter in the back, you know, a little, uh, a little more forgiving for the in-hauling. And, and that's the J6, uh, very successful sale and still a great all-purpose sale. Uh, the J2, like I said, has been around. It's one of our first designs. We hadn't really done a lot with that sale because it uh, has been so successful uh, throughout the wind range. We're, you know, we're not saying any of these two sales are, are obsolete by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, with the world's coming to Los Angeles and the uh, odds are pretty good that we're going to have some races and some really light air and some, some choppy air, we were... Uh, looking at what we could do to improve the, the overall performance of the J70 downrange. And uh, my initial thought was that, you know, the biggest problem with the J70 when it's really light uh, is that it, 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 it has a, quite a stiff carbon mass section. It's really hard to get enough force stay sag and power the front of the boat up in, in really light air. You know, we're, we're talking crew in the boat and crew hiking low, uh, ends up with a force stay that's pretty tight ends up with the front of the jib a little straighter than we want, uh, makes it really hard for the skipper to drive the boat. You know, so we thought, well, let's try and optimize something to, to uh, you know, make the boat faster in those conditions. Uh, so we started with the J2 platform because that sails a little bit rounder in the back. It's a little bit fuller in the head, just to overall a little bit more powerful. Uh, so we started with that platform. We, we added depth down low and forward, you know, if we look in this, this slide, you know, look at the bottom stripe and forward, you know, we gave it more entry angle down there, more punch, uh, so that it, it doesn't need quite as much force stay sag, which should help in the conditions when we, when we can't get it. Uh, so we did that down there. Uh, Alex and I have been working with the group in Los Angeles, sailing about once a month up there, you know, on the world's venue. Uh, we looked at the sale, we tested it. We were pretty happy with it. Uh, sent it back East cause they were doing the, the racing had, uh, had, had started up again, uh, on the East coast in Annapolis. Uh, we sent it to Allen and Zeke and, uh, they managed to win a couple of regattas back there. And we, we've sent it down to, uh, Julio and the guys in Miami and they tested an event or were, uh, fortunate enough to, to win an event down there. Uh, so we're, we're pretty pleased with it and, and we feel it's, it's got, it's a, a improvement on the J2 and we're, we're pretty psyched to, uh, to offer it to everybody else now that it's, it's got some proven results. 
Very cool. And, and you're right. I was fortunate to use it actually in the photo here behind me. We're using it in some pretty good breeze and we're really quick, but I want to go to Julio because Julio sailed uh, in Miami with this and has a lot of experience from sailing on other boats, sailing the J2, the regular J2 now to the J2 plus. So Julio, you know, give us a little insight from your side. Yes, exactly. Adam. As you know, uh, in the last year, I've I've always been a J2 lover, so I sail a lot with the J2, and I consider this jib a, a good sales to have in our inventory uh, as an all-purpose sales. At the same time, we agree that, especially in the, raw, in the low range, it's a, it's a sale that uh, um, it could be difficult, and you have to be really, really accurate to, to trim in the light air and choppy waves condition. And uh, as Eric said, I, I tried the J2 Plus in, the, in Miami, in, uh, in exactly, you know, the choppy waves uh, condition that you can find in Miami in some days. And uh, as we can see in the, in the two picture in this slide, and the, the deeper bottom section of the sails and the, and the fuller entry angle makes, um, I had the feeling that makes this sail really easier in the, to sail in this condition. And, um, uh, I think that uh, this power that you have the, with the J2 Plus, it's a, a big improvement and, uh, and makes the, the boat much easier for the Asman that is allowed to, to steer the boat uh, uh, through, the, through the waves. And let me say that uh, I think that is a, a real step forward, especially uh, for the, um, if we consider that uh, the, the two venues of the next two world championships so in California and in Monte Carlo in the 2022. Uh, with Pinta, we, we won the event in December. And, uh, you know, I felt the huge difference, uh, especially while you are sailing uh, in the fleet. So I think that is a big improvement in the low range. Got it. So before we um, move on here, you know, Rory, if you could help us out. I mean, one of the things about this new jib is, not only is the design slightly different, but some of the detailing of the sail is different. Could you run us through a little bit of those changes that we've made kind of as we still talk about trimming, but I want to make sure we point those out too. Yeah, well, I think that the, the first one that customers, uh, that everyone will find uh, most obvious so uh, quickly is the fact that we've removed the, the tack cover from, uh, from all of our jibs, from all three jib designs. Um, Initially, we put that in, in you know, a few, five or six years ago, probably now, about the Larry Shell Worlds, um, to try and you know keep that area smooth. But we've now removed it, thinking that actually the sail furls nicer uh, without that the stiffness of that tack patch. Um, so it it starts to go around the headstay at the at the tack a little nicer and smoother. So basically, by removing that tack cover, we're actually prolonging the um, the life of the sails, especially in that sort of tack luff area. So um, with that in mind, you know, people are going to have to just be a little more aware of how they've got their headstay pins, uh, whether they're taped up or covered up with, with something. Else. So that, that'll be the first thing that's really sort of obvious on this sail. Um, we've also removed the, the strap and poppers at each end of the zip. Um, they were on there maybe as a bit you know, a bit too much safety margin with those. Uh, we haven't had a zip break open since we've taken them off. So again, we'll take a little bit of a weight and drag saving by taking those off. And then from, from there on, you know, it, it, a lot of the features are the standard features that we've had on our on our successful J70 sales so far. You know, the, the, the fixed length, uh, front loading Velcro batten pockets and Clue ring placed as far forward as we can within the clue uh, class rules and, and things like that. So um, uh, I'm still using our um, Radian 6.3 Ollie, which is a cloth um, exclusive to us at North Sales. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons why the sales have been so successful over the years, because it's a cloth that's, that's just unrivaled uh, in the radial Dacron world. Um, so, um, you know, we're, we're continuing with that cloth uh, and, and seeing the benefits, so all good. Cool, so we're gonna bring Alex. Some of this has been derived from sailing in California and 
you know, one of the photos we have here right off the bat is of Alex here and showing the inhauling of the new jib. And if you could just talk to us a little bit more about why this is so key and with the world's coming up, why this is a good advancement for this sale. Yeah. So traditionally with the standard J2, the thought is because the sale's fuller, you uh, don't have to inhaul it as much as say the J6, but this past summer, you know, Eric work, Eric and I worked with, um, local team here that I sail with, uh, good to go with Doug Rostello and some other local California guys. And, you know, we did a lot of sailing and really light air and lots of chop. And we experimented with, you know, inhaling all the way to the cabin top, as you can see here, you can, this is under eight knots of wind. We got our bow guy in the tank commander position and then our jib trimmer sitting legs in. So we're getting to our minimum of eight degrees of heel and, you know, trying to get, we're always trying to set the boat up to power up and accelerate. Um, and, you know, this is, this is, we think kind of the best baseline way to trim the sail as you inhale to the cabin. And then Alan, if you go to the next slide, yep. the, you try and get the leech to line up with either the outside or the middle spreader mark. And that's kind of a good base spot even in the lighter air to start with your trimming you know it's still kind of the same sort of five and a half holes showing from the front six holes showing if it's a little bit more flat water but in terms of just a base setup for the sale this seems to be a good place to start excellent well one of the things uh, about this uh, new jib that's also come out is people are messing with the rake so along with the j2 plus we're offering a J2 plus with a shorter leech for folks who want to rake further back. And maybe if you could just talk a little bit about what you found in California, and then we'll bring some of the other guys in on that as well. Yeah. Like uh, Alan said, you know, we, we've been really happy with seven or 57 inches of rake measured to the top pin. Um, and actually, if you jump forward to the next slide, you'll kind of see why, uh, you know, what that we'll, we'll go back and forth, but yeah. It's, it's loading the back of the boat, right? So now we have a fuller sail in the front. We're raking aft. We're trying to load the back of the boat, give the helmsman some, some feel. When we first started this sort of experiment, one of the first things we noticed was, you know, the boat kind of stinks to drive. It's very mealy and light air. Sometimes you get lee helm, even with the boom all the way up, up, up above center line. And we're like, how are we gonna make this easier to drive? Well, add more rake, keep the nice full sail in the front, keep the boom above center line. And in both these pictures, you know, it's probably nine knots of wind in the picture on the left with pretty extreme chop. You can see just a hint of weather helm. And then the picture on the right is in a little bit more breeze kind of uh, you know, top end of the Marina del Rey range, you know, 13 knots where, you know, the boom's getting down towards center line and there's still a nice little bit of weather helm. So it gives, gives the helmsman more feedback. And in general, it's just a much easier sail to drive to, especially in the light air in the slot. Gotcha. So I want to go back to this uh, previous slide here. So, um, I don't know if it was Eric or Rory, but maybe it was Rory talking about it. So viewing this, this is still just a guide, right? I mean, we're, we're looking at this and everyone's still got a way of mix and matching and making this work. So if you want to talk about that a little bit, I think that would be good for everybody. Yeah, that's, that's right. I think, um, you know, the, the J2 plus and the J6 standards as we're calling them, you know, We've increased the the rake in the tuning guide to around one four two five millimeters, which is fifty six inches, um, and that seems to be a very nice all purpose number, um, especially for those teams who don't want to have the added complication of changing their rake on a daily basis, um, especially with you know the way the class rules are written and not being able to to uh, to change the rake from the point you leave the dock, um, having a uh, a sing or, or a, a single rake, you know, is pretty handy for a lot of people. It means you can have confidence you don't get caught out on the water on the wrong wrong setting or even on the wrong sail. Having said that, you know, there's still plenty of teams going really quickly throughout a range of rake, which you know, the, the sails fit nicely between one three nine five and one four three five. Um, 
if you're towards the back, you know, towards one, four, three, five, then you might need to look at possibly a slightly longer tack shackle to get the, the sail higher so that you can still inhaul efficiently. Um, but uh, with the standard tack uh, shackle, um, 25 mil shackle, you can easily get the rake forward to sort of one, that one, three, nine, five territory, which you know, especially in the breeze, there's plenty of teams go very quickly at that sort of number. Um, so I think um, it's worth sort of bearing in mind which sale for which rake range. Um, we do give a, you know, a number in the guide, but it is a guide and it's, there will be conditions, there will be sailing styles where people might want to, you know, differ away a little bit from that magic number, but, you know, and that's fine. Uh, but what we found with the, the rake that um, the guys are using on the west coast of the state, um, we couldn't make our standard sail fit that and still in haul efficiently, which is why we brought out the short leech version of that uh, J2 Plus. Um, so that if you are in the, you know, into pushing high rake numbers, then there is a sail ready to go that will, that will match that. Got it. So before we move to the main, I actually have two questions, one for Eric and one for Julio. So Julio, I think you've trimmed both the J2 plus and the J2 plus short leech. So with the rake being different, have you noticed any different trimming of the sail or did it all still set up the same? It was just a different rake measurement. I think that uh, it's really nice uh, that uh, with this uh, combination of sails, the guys can combine, uh, you know, the, the rake with, uh, with the model that we are offering. And uh, personally, I always uh, sail with, uh, with a standard rake range, just as uh, Rory said, to keep it simple. But this is my, my feeling on, on board, my, my approach to the J70. And, but I think that it's really interesting to use also the J2 short leech to, uh, to, to combine these sails with, uh, with, more rake, uh, with more rake back. So uh, <laughs> I think that it's a, a really good compromise to, to combine the, the J2 plus with uh, the rake that the team prefer. Got it. And Eric, you were in California, photos were taken in a coach boat, if I am not mistaken. So, you know, just what was your overall feeling of, you know, Alex was talking about the change at helm and just what you think that are the gains for going to the world's venue of that being in place of just having the boat have some feel. Yeah, I, I think that last sentence really, really hit the, hit the nail on the head, you know, and that, we're liable to see a lot of downrange races and, you know, we're, we're inhauling the boat, the jibs more than ever, and the jibs are fuller. So we're, you know, we're, we're loading the front of the boat. We're kind of pulling the bow down more. So that's taking helm away from a boat that already doesn't have much helm. You know, the boat's quite narrow and it's got a lot of power and we need to figure out some way to, to get the helm back. So we got some, we got some feel in the boat in, in light air, you know, the boat to me is either, you know, you're either underpowered or overpowered. And when it's underpowered, it's, it's hard to track. It's hard to get the boat to go straight. So we got to get some feel. We got to load the back of the boat. Now we've loaded up the front of it. So, you know, the rake is one way to, to help alleviate that, that Lee helm. And I've actually used it quite far up the range and, uh, we haven't seen any any detriment to it and and i, I really like what uh, rory touched on is that you know these are starting points uh there's there's more teams out there that are are messing with the uh you know different masts in, in different boats and different spreader sweeps this is a great range to start out with and then you know kind of see what symptom your boat has you know if you're in light air and you you've got a lot of lee helm or maybe the main's too flat or you know, the chip stalled all the time. There's, you know, we're trying to give you a starting point and then look at it. What's the boat telling us? Cause we, we want the boat to do the work is what it comes down to. You know, the boat should rip along and do it. If the helmsman is struggling and the main trimmer is always on him. Oh, you're too slow. You're too fast. You're inside the jib. You know, we got to We got to help them out, you know? So it's our job to make sure that the helmsman can drive the boat and, and get the signals from the helmsman too. And, and the biggest one when it's really light to me is, is the helm. How do we get the boat to helm? You know, a little bit of rudder angle. It's, it's also, it's, it's, it's developing lift, you know, our foils help us go to windward. And if we're pushing to leeward, well, the angle's going the wrong way. So uh, that's where a lot of this rake came from. 
uh, and I think the, the fuller sails and the rake too, we're going to be sailed. We're going to be sailing the boat, setting it up so that it can accelerate through the chop, which means we can't sheet as hard, hard, you know, that's one way we get helm. We, we pull the traveler up, we sheet the main hard, we load the leech. We can't do that when it's choppy, right? The boat hates the chop as it is. And we got to make it a little twistier, a little more forgiving to go through there. So I, I think the rake, there's still a lot to be learned from the rake. And uh, we're just we're just kind of touching the surface of it, but we've got uh, we've got a sail that that fits, so we can still trim both sails properly. If you if you go that long rake route, there's a good there's a jib that'll fit, and uh, you can still it won't limit your trimming on the on the head sail. Yeah, and I, and I will go to your point of saying that having the boat be easier to steer definitely makes it faster for sure. I mean, like in the photo here behind me, you know, I've done a bunch of sailing with my wife, and she's you know, quite a good driver, but you, she could definitely tell a difference from going from a sail that had a narrower groove to a wider groove and the boat just performed better. And I'm sure in these conditions, that's just a huge advantage. So. Well, you had the proper helmsman on there too, hands. Alan, right? What's that? You had the proper helmsman on there too, right? You got exactly. Not, and... not me. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so the other sale that we're adding to the lineup here this year that we're excited about is the XDS4. Uh, so we'll bring in our designer here, Rory, to talk a little bit about that. And we can talk about where this sale fits in the lineup as well. Yeah, thanks. These, they were actually sort of designed independently. Um, I came away from the 2019 season thinking, you know, our sale package was really nice, but there was a couple of little sort of cosmetic things um, in the booth, so I looked into that to try and see if we could smooth the sail out a little bit. And in doing that and getting into the designs, I sort of I, I went down a sort of concept of <clears throat> making the sail a bit more smooth vertically, which had the result of deepening up the middle of it a little bit and flattening the top of it. Um, the sail itself sits in between the range, you know, our current two sails, the F1 and the XCS2. So it's not a huge departure from either of those sails, um, but it has, um, uh, what I noticed with, with, the, with both those sails really, is you had to be really pretty accurate with your lower shroud, D1 shroud tension. And if you got out of sync and were either a bit too tight or a bit too loose, it was quite difficult to manage the sails effectively. Or it's not impossible, you know, but it just wasn't so easy. So I felt that there was maybe a room for improvement there a little bit. So a little bit of a um, rebalance on the love curve and also the, the seam shape within it um, produced a sail, as I say, that's a little flatter than the XCS2 certainly in the full batten area, but with a bit more mid leech power. So you start to develop your power and your hel the helm that you know Eric's been referring to from the middle of the sail whilst allowing the head to stay open uh, for sort of for acceleration uh, and, and keeping the sort of top speed up a little bit. So I think ultimately that it will be a sail which is slightly easier to trim and slightly easier to get the mast um, tuning correct. Or if you're a little off on the tuning, then it's not such a critical, critical issue. Um, so ultimately, you know, with it, with this, with a slightly flatter top and bottom, and slightly deeper in the middle, um, the feeling is we, we're producing a sail which is is producing less drag for a very similar drive forward. So as a result, is a sort of net win. Um, and I think Alan, you, you know, you've used this sale probably more than most. Yeah. Uh, in the 2020 season, and you, you, you know, you're one of its biggest advocates from memory. Yeah, and I, I think what you're saying is exactly right. Is the sale? It was not as tuning critical. Um, it felt like it had a little bit more of a, a leeway to set itself up, and it was a little easier in that it wasn't as backstay um, sensitive. It would kind of go through the ranges of that a little bit easier. Um, and again, my experience was it just kept the boat easier, more forgiving to sail than, you know, the F1 to me is, is very fast. I mean, obviously we used that when we won the midwinters last year, but it's very tuning sensitive. And if it's a little off, sometimes it doesn't look perfect to me. It's a little harder. And the, the XCS2, depending on the rig, is just sometimes 
perfect fit or it's sometimes too full. And I think this sale really fits that medium range. And um, I found it to be very nice in that you didn't have to be constantly babysitting it, so to speak. Like it, it kind of did its own thing and you could focus on other things. And I like that about it. So um, one of the things that Julio talked about was potentially the patents on this sale kind of go up and down the range. He's been an F1 and an XCS2 user. But one of the things that we talked about, and I'm hoping he can come in and talk about is maybe the need of having to change batons as often with this sale. Um, Julio, if you could chat yeah. about that. Yeah, as you said, Alan, I sell a lot with the XCS2 with the, the Petit Terrible team in 2019. And we were happy about our combination. Then we try also the F1 and we sail with the F1 in South America, at the South American Championship. Um, but um, yeah, the XGS4 probably is the main set that we were looking for because uh, it's, a, it's exactly in the middle range. And um, to talking about the, the top section, um, as, uh, as you know from the webinar that we did uh, you know, in, uh, in, uh, in during, um, and during the spring, uh, I, I play a lot usually with the XGS2 with the button. Probably, probably sometimes too much because uh, I will. I was using three different set of button, and uh, with the XGS4, I think that it's a it's a main cell really easier, no, to adjust with the with the top buttons, and uh, probably with this main cell we can sail longer with the softer one, and then change just one time in the windy condition, and this is good because. Uh, as we know, between a race and the other one, you can, you know, the most of the time you don't have, you don't have a lot of time to play with the buttons. You have to choose the rig tune. You have to look around for the strategy. And uh, I think that this could be a really, a really step forward. And um, let me add also that the in the J70, we know that there are a lot of about the crew weight. There are some big differences in the fleet. And uh, with this main cell, I think uh, that we are perfectly cover the middle, uh, mid the middle range of the crew weight in the fleet. So it's a, a, a good upgrade. Excellent. So um, just to wrap up this new sale, I mean, Eric, could you just run us through a few of the details again of just what our mains have standard product you know, detailing? Because I think the details are really important when it comes to sales like this and what we're you know, we're doing across the range of all three sales, basically. Yeah, we uh, we kind of honed in on the construction of the sales the last few years. You know, we it's been more refining the shapes. You know, we we did a lot of upgrades to patches and things like that. We 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 kept all those features. Uh, sales come standard with the uh, top battens that are both all purpose and heavy. You know, so you've gotten a light and a heavier set of battens. All our bands have the uh, RBS rocket tensioners on the outside. Uh, we talked about the patches and, uh, you know, we have the standard spreader windows and, and vision windows, you know, patches for the spreader tips. Uh, you know, the nice tack straps goes around the mask, which is adjustable. You know, the sections are slightly different between the Selden and the uh, Southern, and that fits it quite easily. Um, you know, we've, we've honed in on the cloth as a contender that we work very closely with in the mainsail. Uh, like we talked about the jib, is a 6 3 radiant only, which is very special cloth. Uh, so we're pretty, we're pretty happy where we are. We're always looking for new things and, and, and new ideas. And we've incorporated all of them into both of these sales. Awesome. And I think the one thing just to keep in mind is that we're still going to continue to offer the F1 and the XCS2. This is an addition to the product line. So this will be the third main we'll offer uh, for 2021. And same, well, I guess not fully the same with the jibs, but we'll still offer the J6 and the J2 Plus. And I, I guess it's still the J2 for a little while anyway, um, as we go forward. So one of the things I want to talk about and bring Alex in here, um, and before I get going further, the chat room is now open. If you guys have any questions for the group, start uh, sending them via the chat and we'll try and get them answered in this section. But, um, you know, Alex, here's a good photo of some tubo testing. I think it's in Tampa. It's not in California, but it's still tubo testing. If you could just talk a little bit about how important it's been for us. I know you've worked really hard on the West Coast during COVID period, still testing and helping develop sales and how that's part of our culture. If you could talk about that a little bit and then also about kind of the lead up to the world. It's kind of a twofold question. 
Um, both of those, if you could bring us up to speed. Yeah, it was pretty interesting during when uh, COVID first hit, Eric and I were talking and we talked, you know, every other day about just what's going on here in California and our lofts and whatnot. And we're like, so what do we want to do? You know, we got all this time off and, we, and Eric said, let's get faster. You know, let's just really try hard to make the sales faster and really learn the venue. So it was a little bit of a blessing in disguise that we had all this time. And luckily we have a really good team and with, that has good resources and we had great support from guys like Tim and Paul Hobson who are at the top of uh, North One Design. And they said, yeah, just go do it. Whatever you guys think you need to do. Um, just go make it happen. And so we, you know, we spent probably close to 21 days sailing in Marina Del Rey and a wide variety of different conditions. And, you know, I'll tell people we might not always uh, start in no wind, but we might finish some races in no wind. And we got to make sure that we understand, you know, how the boat reacts and all those conditions. So uh, with all, that all being said, I mean, despite some of the negative news that's going around, California Yacht Club remains very committed to hosting a world championship this uh, coming summer in whatever form it might be. Uh, you know, we haven't, I, I will be the first to admit that as a West Coast person, we haven't done the best job of promoting our West Coast swing, but I think people should look to leave Annapolis in the middle of May and come out to California for the first weekend in June and sail the California race week um, at Cal Yacht Club. And then from there sail Long Beach race week, uh, which will be, you know, it's one of my favorite events of the year. That's the last weekend in June. Um, and then sail the pre-worlds and the worlds. And uh, while, you know, August is the best time for sailing in California, and, uh, you know, pretty steady sea breeze, kind of the first race will probably be in about, you know, six to seven knots. And the second race might be in nine to 11 knots. And the third race, you know, end of the day, we might see as high as 13, but there's always going to be wind and it's, you know, consistent every day. There won't be a day where we'll just be kind of sitting around with our sitting on our hands. We'll be, um, will be out there racing. So we really hope to see everybody out here this coming summer. Gotcha. So we've, we've started getting a few questions, so um, we'll throw it out there. But one of the first questions we got is, you know, I already have some of the North sales before these new models. Am I left out or, you know, do I have to buy these new ones? I mean, are my old sales still competitive? Um, you know, what do you guys think about that question? I can address that. No, absolutely. The, uh, you know, our models are, are, are not going out of date. They're just getting refined and, and improved upon, you know, the J six is, is still a, a great all purpose jib. Uh, we, we race with it for years and years, you know, use it at the, uh, you know, the world's in Marblehead, which was a lot of, uh, a lot of varying conditions, uh, you know, which we probably, that's, you know, kind of what I touched on earlier, we probably won't see that in the worlds in Marina del Rey, you know, I would say we'd be, we'd be fortunate if we see a couple legs where we're actually planing downwind, majority of it's going to be downrange, um, you know, and, and I think you just got to figure out which one really suits your style and your boat and your mast and how you have your spreader set up and, and what you're used to. But by no means have we made any of our sales obsolete. Uh, still, you know, the J2 is, has won more regattas and probably any jib that's been, you know, any jib design that's been out there. Uh, so it's not, uh, we're not throwing those sales away or putting them out. We're just trying to always increase our, uh, our choices while, while, you know, might not, like we, we've kind of stressed a lot of uh, everybody on the panel has kind of stressed during this thing that a lot of it's not just straight a lot faster, but we're, we're making the choices easier. We're making the boat easier to sail. We're making it less critical to have the exact batten in in any condition or opening up the ranges. And that that's really, you know, an A class where we're pushing forward and there's a lot of, of, high-end racing going on that's that's sometimes the difference right you end up we're all kind of going the same speed but if it's easier for us to do it and we can keep our head out of the boat and we can make the right call at the right time you know that can be the the difference makers 
Got it. So a couple other questions. Um, one here we got from Bill Hardesty for Alex Curtis. He says his tails stick to the window and he can't make it stop. What should he do? Oh, well, Billy, it's still in the R and D process. Uh, Eric and I have a few other things to work out, but Billy will, uh, will collaborate on, uh, your findings and come up with a good solution. Got it. I know one thing I've actually done is cut them a little shorter so they don't overlap the back end of the window. That does help. And, you know, you don't like sail in the rain either. What's that? Just don't sail when it's raining. That helps as well. Or that, yeah. It never exactly. rains in California, Rory. It's never <laughs> here in California. If it's raining, there's no sailing. So. Same as the UK right. then, just the same. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So one of the one of the questions uh, we just got as well is uh, for our two West Coast guys for sailing on the West Coast. Are you guys leaning towards the longer rake or the standard rake, Jim? I, I saw that it came from my boy George, who's in Santa Barbara. He sails with Pat Tool and the Three Big Dogs for Santa Barbara sailing. I, I think the short leech option is is really nice. You know, Santa Barbara sailing in Marina del Rey is pretty similar in terms of wind, the sea state. It's a little bit more swelly in Santa Barbara, but George, the I think the short leech option is the, is the correct move for the three big dogs. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Got it. We got a question, Julio. It said, Julio, you explained about different battens for the main. Do you have a light and a heavy set, or do you have three different sets? What is your normal go-to move for battens? Yeah, usually when uh, when I was sitting with the XTS2, I was using uh, three different sets. The softer one was the 180. Then I was moving with the 200, and then with the stiffer set was the 230. And um, I, I think that with the new models, uh, probably you can say just with two, the softer and the, and the stiffer one. So usually I was trying to, you know, to uh, adjust my setting, uh, looking, uh, you know, while I was choosing the strategy for the race. So looking at uh, the condition, the wind condition, and I was playing with the softer one uh, from, uh, you know, four to eight knots that I was moving to the 200. And then with plus uh, then uh, 15 knots, I was putting the, the stiffer one. So one you is that if you can leave some battens on the dock you can bring more beers with you yeah <laughs> good, call, exactly. good call i mean that seems like a reason to switch right there uh, right yeah, off yeah. the bat I <laughs> also might also my team my teammates would be happy you know <laughs> exactly exactly um so question uh rory we'll, we'll let you answer this one so if you have an amateur driver team do you think it'd be easier to steer for more rake or standard rake, or if you were in that position, which one are you more likely to try or start experimenting with? I think it would depend on where you sail and in what type of conditions. Um, I think the, the large rake settings are likely to prove successful in venues like LA where it's very difficult to keep the boat on the breeze uh, when you've got not much pressure on the helm at all, and then this awkward sea state, which is altering the balance in the helm all the time, and it's very easy to get caught lee helm, and the next thing you know, you've just shot sideways and, and lost your lane. So I think in those conditions, the rake will offset the, the more powerful jib setup and allow the guys to stay um, stay on the breeze and, and ultimately have a, a you know a performance across the ranges. Now, if you were sailing around in a windy venue in let's say Lake Garda or uh, or sailing in the Solent or, or somewhere like that, then I am not sure yet, not convinced yet that a high rake number would be faster. So I think it's um, I you know I think it's. The, the settings need to be appropriate for the conditions that you're predominantly sailing in. Um, more helm doesn't necessarily mean faster, but if you can minimize the, the periods where you have huge loss through lee helm, then ultimately you get to the windward mark in a better position. But sailing around in dead flat water and light winds, I wouldn't be that surprised to see 
you know, our, our standard rake settings with a standard J2 plus being a very successful setup there. So, um, you know, I, 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 the other thing with it, we know that you've got to bear in mind as well a little bit is with, with the high rate number is what that has an effect on you downwind as well. So, um, it, you know, it's another thing to think about whether you want to uh, try that. But if, uh, if you get around the top mark, obviously in, in better shape, then you're maybe willing to cough up a little bit of the downwind stuff. Right, and that was one of the questions was, do we think there's a price? And I guess the real question is, is so far it hasn't shown to be anything worth freaking out about. I mean, but it, there, it does act a little bit different. I think we all kind of agree with that. And it's been a thing that, you know, we're still working on, I think for sure, as we go through, so. Um, different question now for Alex and Eric, you know, has all your testing been done via on the water or have you been doing a lot of, you know, back and forth with the design team and them running VPP things, which is what the question asked, or how does this process work for you guys to develop this stuff for California? Good question. Uh, you know, it was pretty cool that the, uh, the J70 was the first one design boat, brand new boat that, uh, you know, we ran through the design suite originally and, and came up with the original set of sails. Um, now what's, and right out of the box, they were, you know, everything was just spot on. You know, we also work with the, uh, the guys at Southern Spars and predict the uh, mass tuning and bend characteristics of the mast. So that was amazing. And that's, you know, why we're still at the J2 today but at, at some point on the water, you know, we've learned a lot about how the boat, what the boat likes, you know, in particular conditions. Uh, so these are pretty small refinements that we're working on at the moment. Uh, and at some point, you know, maybe there's the designers and people like that. They don't want to hear this, but you just got to get on the water and just sail and just make it happen. You know, <laughs> Rory knows better than everybody that he's, he learns a lot more when he goes on the water and looks at the sail, especially when we're dealing with Dacron which stretches and how it reacts and then what the boat likes. Uh, so all this latest development has strictly been on the water, but it had its roots in the North design suite and the VPP programs that we have. Got it. Um, well, that's all the questions we've gotten through the chat. Oh, no, we do have one. Um, anything new in the spinnaker design area and anything for wing on wing optimization? Uh, I mean, Rory, you'd, you'd handle our designs. What do you think about that? It seems like our spinnaker pretty hard to beat so far. So I think that's it, Alan. You know, I think it, it across the range, it's a very successful sale. Um, we offer it as you know, and, and have done for a few years in Airex as well as Dynacoat. And those two materials do, um, you know, do react differently. Uh, I imagine, you know, for somewhere like LA that the Dynacoat slightly stretch here. Um, I think that that sail will be very, very successful in that type of sailing. Um, and, you know, you could design a, J70 asymmetric spinnaker with wing on wing in mind, it would be the greatest sail in the world for the, all the other times that you're out there. So I think it would be, uh, you know, we haven't gone down the road of designing a sail specifically for wing sailing. Um, and I think, uh, that, you know, the, the design we have right now, the AP1 is, you know, ain't broke, so it's pretty hard to try and fix it. Um, I agree. Yeah, we've looked at it. We've looked at it a couple times. And I think this goes back to the previous question, too, is that, you know, the original designs that got run through the VPP that the spinnaker was designed there as well, you know, and uh, I'm always <laughs> impressed at that kite to this day, because if I, if I call Rory and say, hey, Roy, you need to design me a spinnaker, an asymmetrical, you know, the first thing he's going to come back to me and say, well, what apparent wind angle do you want it to go through? You know, or any designer is going to say that. And with the J70, you say, oh, well, uh, it's got to go through all of them. And also, you know what else? We're going to flip it inside out and it's going to go wing on wing. So can you make that happen too? So we, we haven't been able to, to, we've tried, we've done three or four different designs, trying different things. And it, it's, we haven't been able to come with anything better yet, which is quite a testament to the uh, to design software. For sure. So 
um, we're, we're kind of wrapping this up here. Um, if anybody out there has more questions, all of our direct emails are on here. And we're a small portion of the J70 team for North Sales. And there's so many of our teammates who are out there who are you know, sailing the boats as much as we are and, and out there to support. So feel free to reach out to them as well. But I want to thank the four of you for all of your input here. I think it's a really exciting time that we're you know, starting to get back into racing, hopefully, and, and everyone's trying to get regattas to happen that we have you know, three new products for our customers to start sailing with and, and shows our hard work over this uh, pandemic period. And I, I think it's pretty exciting that we're, we're looking forward to hopefully seeing each other again, sailing and not just through a zoom call. It's kind of uh, I'm kind of getting excited. I don't know about you guys, but I, I prefer to do it that way. But um, anyway, well, thank the four of you for all your help. If any of you guys out there have questions, feel free to, uh, send us a note. And if not, enjoy the rest of your afternoon or evening or morning, depending on where you are and stay safe. And we'll see you all soon. Thank you guys. Thanks Al. Looking Thanks, forward guys. to seeing you, bud. See everybody, see everybody in California. Thank you. And bye from Italy. <laughs>